Hello and welcome to a new video about the boom. Yeah. Next video about explosion protection. Last time we talked about what might cause an explosion, what are the circumstances an explosion might happen. Yeah. This time we're going to talk about how to prevent this explosion. Yeah. Or what we can do to protect us. So, basically there are three types of protection. Yeah? The primary, the secondary and the tertiary. And <laughs> what is behind this? Primary Do whatever is necessary to not come to this uh, explosive area. Okay, we said that we need a certain ratio between burnable material and, and, and oxygen and so on. Primary explosive protection, don't let it come to an explosive, prevent an explosive atmosphere. Okay, this is the primary goal. Atmosphere. This is the primary approach. If you don't have an explosive atmosphere, nothing would explode. So try to design your process or whatever you are trying to control to prevent explosive atmospheres. Yeah, no, no. Okay. This is not always possible. So, secondary. Secondary explosive protection. If there is an explosive atmosphere, cannot be prevented. Yeah? Do not include the necessary energy to ignite it. Yeah? Prevent sparks and so on. Yeah? Do not prevent the ignition okay, of the explosion. Prevent the ignition of an explosion. Okay. We really have to be sure that we are not bringing in the necessary energy to let it come to an explosion. That's the secondary approach. So if there you cannot prevent that there is an explosive atmosphere, at least do not ignite, make no ignition. And then there is the tertiary. approach if you cannot prevent this either yeah? so if there is an explosive atmosphere and you potentially cause this explosion yeah, then try to keep the destruction to a minimum okay make an encapsulation make an armor something like this to physically Bring the or let the explosion just be local, yeah? localize. All right, all right, simply localize. Make a cover, make an armor, make a tank, make something. If it is exploding, exploding in there, yeah, do not harm an outside of this barrier. Okay, this is the tertiary. Yeah. Prevent primary, prevent atmosphere, secondary, prevent explosion, tertiary, prevent damage caused by the explosion. Okay. Uh, this is a good this is a good sentence. Prevent damage. Now 
These are the three step is uh, the three steps approach. Yeah. Now, what's uh, what what is an explosive atmosphere, or how likely is this, or what if I'm in secondary? Yeah? If I try to prevent the expl explosion, yeah? how often, when, where? Yeah? There are zones defined. Yeah? Zones defined, zone zero, yeah? or if this is the gas and if it's dust, it's code 20, two zero. Yeah? This means in zone zero, there's the potential of an explosive atmosphere always or very often, often or always, yeah? we have an explosive atmosphere. Often or even always. This would be zone zero. Then there is zone one or in dust, it's two one. There we would have an explosive atmosphere sometimes. Sometimes. And then we have zone 2 or 22, if it's about dust. Yeah. There we have the uh, explosive atmosphere occasionally. Okay. Whatever this means, right? So, sometimes I do have what means sometimes? Huh? What means often? By the way, those zones in a layout plan or in a in a in a, in a simply in a plan, yeah, in a map, they will be drawn in. So this area is zone zero, this area is zone one, this area is zone two, and so on. Smoking prohibited. And that's it. Huh? However, what is often? Always is clear. Always is clear. But what is often? It is common understanding yeah, that it's bigger than 50% of the operation. So if it's more than half time of the operational of the operational time, then it's always or often. Yeah. Here we are less than 50%, then it's already sometimes. Huh? Or down to 30 minutes a year. Huh? This is sometimes. Huh? And occasionally is if it's smaller than 30 minutes a year. Huh? This is the common understanding of those terms. Eh? Occasionally, 30 minutes a year. These are the zones. Okay. Now, if you buy or if you if you are using an equipment which can be used in such zones. Those such zones, they are drawn or they are marked. Yeah? The marking looks like this. It's the explosive area sign. Yeah? X area. You are in an X area, different zones. You can buy X rated, ah, you can buy. Buy. You can buy X-rated control elements. Yeah. On those X-rated control elements, there is usually something written on it, yeah, which gives you an impression, what or an idea, what is this? I've made up an example here, yeah. or I found an example. It's maybe a better way. This 
labels our tool as explosive protected. Yeah? There are some things written on it. We will talk about this. Yeah? And this, well, the first thing we know, yeah? that's the CE sign, at least my interpretation of the CE sign. Yeah? So this is the label of conformity. And this here is where it was checked. Yeah? The number of the, of the named party hmm? who checked this C conformity. This is the sign for explosive protection. And now this one. Yeah? This one is the so-called group. Hmm? This. Group. There are three groups. Group number one yeah, would be coal mining. So this would then be a an, an device which is suitable for coal mining. Group number two, like this here, yeah, this is for gas. There are also A, B and C, group 2A here, B, C. Yeah. The C ones are the most dangerous gases. Okay. A ones can hardly ignite, C ones can easily ignite and in between. Yeah. This is the group 2. And then there's the group 3, which means dust. Okay. And there's also a, B and C. A is fiber. B is isolated task. And C is dust which is conductive. This is the group. Okay. This here is the so-called category. category. This category, uh, there are also three ones. Eh? There is one G or one D. G is always gas, D is always dust. Rare does not really matter because it's also mentioned here, basically. There's two G and 2D, yeah? and there are 3G and 3D. Yeah? And those, this is the most protective one, and this is the least protective one. Yeah? So this one I can use in zone 0, these ones I can use in zone 1, and these ones I can use in zone 2. Okay? This is the big difference. Yeah. So this 3G is only allowed if there is occasionally a uh, that atmosphere. Yeah. This, if I have always atmosphere, yeah, then I use 1G. Yeah. These are the categories except mining. If I have mining, there are the categories M1 and M2. Yeah. M1 can be kept operated if an explosive atmosphere is there and M2 needs to be switched off if a certain level of methane is, is reached. Yeah? So this, this is for mining. This is others. Except mining. It's the category written here. Okay. And then we have the ignition protection. Which color do I use? Nah, red. It's this. This is the ignition protection. The ignition protection. This I is actually this EEX. Okay. Huh? And this I is actually what, what is meant here. Yeah? I means intrinsic. Intrinsic safety. Yeah? So 
it's built in somehow. Yeah? There is also C constructive constructive safety safety. There is an N. This is non-sparking. Yeah. There is uh, an M encapsulation. There are some. Yeah. I will make it punkty 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 because it would be boring. I will simply attach a file where those things are written. Okay, you can find it in the link yeah, where I describe what ignition protection. Basically, there are. You know, there's pressurized encapsulation, there's flame-proof enclosure, and so on. There are different technologies on how to prevent the ignition, ignition protection. Okay, this is this. This is basically, uh, this is basically the subclass here, yeah? and this here. This here is the temperature class. Okay. There are from T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6. This is the potential ignition temperature of the atmosphere. Yeah? So T6 is 85 degrees Celsius. Yeah? T5 is 100 degrees Celsius. Yeah? It's 135 degrees Celsius. Yeah? It's 200 degrees Celsius. It's 300 and 450. These are the levels. So, if I have a material which is burning after th at 300 degrees Celsius, I need a T1. Huh? If I have a material which is already burning at 85 degrees Celsius, I need a T6, uh, temperature level. Huh? Level of protection, rising numbers. Okay? So, here these are very stable elements like carbon monoxide, uh, hydrogen, uh, methane, methane, propane is also here. Yeah. Here we would have, for instance, ethylene. Here we would have diesel or gas, normal fuel. Yeah. Would be here. These are the areas. So T, it's T3, 200 degrees Celsius ignition temperature. So no element of this device will be hotter than 200 degrees Celsius. Yeah, this is the strange numbers. These are the strange numbers written on our protective or on explosive protected equipment. Yeah, so if you have a certain, you're in a certain zone, uh, if you have a certain material, choose the correct element for it. Uh, but before, try to prevent an explosive atmosphere. If, now, if everything else fails, at least localize the explosion. Okay. That's it. Yeah. That's explosive protective. Next time we're going to talk about IP classes. Yeah. I'm sure you heard about it. Yeah. Because of your handheld devices, of your handies and so on. Yeah. Mobile phones. Uh, IP65. What does it mean? We will talk about this next time. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.